quick. This channel gives a daily giveaway of 100,000 Terra Luna coins right before the video starts. To participate, simply subscribe to this channel, watch this video, and leave a comment with the hashtag Luna. Best wishes. Luna has continuing to wow crypto aficionados all over the world for a coin that was in the midst of a crash not long ago. Luna is gaining traction, and the crypto community is taking note. Do you want to know what all of this is about? Please continue to watch this video. Disclaimer. Welcome back to Channel Lunatics, and thank you for watching another video. If you're new to the channel, this is the place to be. I offer regular updates about the Luna token on this channel. So, if that's something you're like, consider joining the family by subscribing to the channel and activating the notification email so you never miss another video. Let's get started with today's video. As previously stated, Luna's market valuation has returned to $1 billion, and this is a coin that was recently involved in a crash. During the crisis, Luna's market cap fell below $800 million, but it is currently back above $1 billion. And, while it is still a long way from its all-time high market worth of $40 billion, the fact that it has reached $1 billion at all should be interpreted as a sign that the coin is preparing for even larger things, don't you think? What exactly is a market capitalization? When we talk about market cap, we mean the total valuation of an asset's total circulating amount. That is, if there are 50 all-American coins in circulation, each worth a dollar, Link's market cap will be $50. Now, the reason I'm presenting this is to help us all understand why Luna's $1 billion valuation is beneficial to the ecosystem. It just goes to demonstrate that the coin is becoming more precious by the day, especially when you consider how many burns have occurred at the same period. As a result, circulation supply has decreased but market capitalization has increased. That is fantastic news and it is exactly what LULAC and its shareholders require right now. Meanwhile, Luna was on the verge of a major breakthrough. It did, however, fall quickly following a good corrective pattern for any token, not financial advice. However, if you want to get in on the LMC action and profit, now would be a good moment to buy the drop because the price history of Luna shows that there may be another rally before we realize it. You only need to look at Alliance's price chart to see this. Since the coin's astonishing rebound began, every brief price drop has been followed by an even longer price boom. Of course, this does not guarantee that a price increase is imminent, but if patterns are to be believed, it may benefit you to plan for one. However, before making such a decision, please conduct your own study. Now, there's a fairly intense but interesting Twitter debate going on between Luna and Luna fans. The discussion is on validator compensation and the optimum structure. It's extremely fascinating that the two parties have opposing views on what's best for the Terra community and ecosystem. Let us investigate the argument. So, on the one hand, a Luna supporter believes that the Terra chain requires a minimum validator commission. A minimum commission for validators, in their perspective, prevents large validators from manipulating smaller validators. Apparently, if the powers that be do not establish a minimum commission, major validators may set a commission that exclusively benefits them but disadvantages smaller validators. According to the tweeter, with the Twitter handle lurk around find, and no minimum commission, big validators set a commission of 0%, run at a loss, gather massive delegations, and then raise the commission to 1%. Small validators cannot compete with 1%. A tiny validator could compete by providing a service to the community. However, people behave in their own self-interest. Most will simply delegate to the validator with the lowest commission. So a small validator, even if they provide a lot of value to the community, is out of luck. If this continues, a tiny group of major validators will emerge who will not behave in the best interest of the community. According to Tara Observer, they believe that this particular issue contributed to the demise of the old Tara. However, knowing that they must pay at least a portion of their staking earnings to someone, they believe that users will choose validators who best promote the community. An LNC advocate, on the other side, believes that establishing a minimum commission for validators is a bad idea for the community. They believe that the concept for a minimum commission came from Luna validators who are envious of leniency. Concerning these allegedly envious Luna validators, Lulak Dow writes that they are now proposing a universal minimum commission of 10%, which would mean that all validators would earn this even if they added no value to the community. 
This is revolting. This LULAC supporter contends that providing a minimal commission for validators will reward individuals who offer nothing to the community because the minimum commission would be non-discriminatory. There are no minimum commissions. Serves as an incentive for validators to do the right thing, effectively forcing them to earn their keep rather than being paid to do nothing. According to Ollie Once Dow, absurd arguments have been advanced that 10% commissions are means to aid the community. They're not. There's no guarantee that this yield will go someplace other than the pockets of those attempting to pass the vote without the community realizing. It's also absurd to draw a false dichotomy between a 0% current commission and a 10% minimum commission. If there is any fair argument to be made, and we don't believe there is, it is that the minimum should no longer cover infrastructure expenditures. Now that you've heard both sides of the debate, please share your thoughts in the comments area. Which of these viewpoints do you believe is better for the community? Now for some crypto market news. Bitcoin appears to be entering sleep mode as network activity has slowed since the crypto market crash in mid-June. Bitcoin network activity has been noticeably slowing. This is not surprising given that people normally try to get out of the market as soon as possible after a market fall. In this scenario, when the price of Bitcoin fell, there was a boom in crypto activity as some holders scrambled to get out of the market as soon as possible. However, as the price of BTC is leveled off and is now trading around $20,000, trading activity has halted. Indeed, trade volume has fallen so low that many believe Bitcoin may be entering a dormant state. Not only have trading activities decreased, but daily transactions have decreased from approximately 252,000 transactions per day on the Bitcoin network. Every day, around 242,000 people connect to the network. In addition, the Great Crypto Meltdown of 2020 has wiped off nearly 100,000 Bitcoin millionaires, according to Cointelegraph, on November 12th. Only days after Bitcoin reached a new all-time high of roughly $69,000, 108,886 BTC addresses reported a balance larger than $1 million, according to Databit Info charts. Similarly, the number of BTC whales has been lowered. Whale wallets are those that hold $10 million or more in Bitcoin. And, whereas there were 10,587 whale wallets prior to the crash, only 4,342 of them still possess $10 million or more in Bitcoin. Surprisingly, none of these has discouraged individuals from purchasing BTC. In fact, Many people see this as an opportunity to acquire BTC or level up their existing holdings to one BTC. According to reports, 13,000 new whole coin owners have wallets containing one or more BTC, raising the total number of whole coins to around 800.